All right, so today I'm going to show you how to remove the keyboard on a CFT8 Panasonic Toughbook. Um, let's pretend that this keyboard doesn't work. Obviously, it's missing keys. Uh, let's pretend that this is not working. Um, we're going to have two screws here. I've already pre-removed these, so there's two screws in here. After you remove those two screws, you've got to remove... I remove this whole little uh, handle slash rubber feet that keep it from slipping. I remove... So you remove these two screws and these two, and then this will just come off. I remove those just to make working with it a lot easier. Uh, underneath, there's one screw there. A total of three screws, one under here, there, and here that will hold the hard drive cover. Then you remove the hard drive very carefully. Then you have, if you're looking at the unit, we're going to be looking at it this way. Okay, so we have one screw there, here, here, and there. There's a total of four, so it'll be the first three on the top of this gray sticker and the one single screw on this, uh, looking at the unit like this, it'll be on the right hand side, very top, right by this. So let me pause it, I'll remove those, and then we'll continue. Alright, so now we have the strap completely gone, the hard drive cover and the hard drive removed. We've removed the four screws that hold in the keyboard. Now we have to remove these little cool pin uh, clips that uh, hold in the keyboard. So we have to remove the films. Okay, so I would recommend, this is what I do. I take a razor blade, very gently, just lift up the corner, remove it, set it down. As you can see, I've already removed these before. So they go a lot easier. Remove those and set it aside. Sometimes the little double-sided tape that holds these likes to stay on here. So you could just put double-sided tape on the whole thing and then plop it on. Uh, to remove these, you could use a plastic pry tool. Place the point end. And my battery's about to die, so let's see. Lift it up and slide it out. Lift up and slide out. Put it in the hole, lift up and slide out, and slide out. And then just tip it over. You have that. Open your unit. Of course, be more gentle with your unit. This is a parts unit that I have here. Bad motherboard doesn't work for crap. Now, um, yours, this, these are double sided taped on. So, um, what I like to do, obviously, if it's bad, you're going to replace it, right? So, what I like to do is I like to take my plastic pry tool. Stick it in the bottom here and just, oh, let me get my finger out of there. Good Lord. Okay, so this is going to be hard trying to hold this and do it at the same time. So I like to shove it in there. Hear that? Okay. So do the same thing at the, on the bottom ones. Okay. Once you have that, then you can come up here, stick your hand, and just break the seal. Now you will bend, like the corner will bend. These are really flimsy keyboards. So then we expose this tape here. Okay, this is, you, uh, you can kind of see the, the color difference. That's where it's not sticking to any metal. Um, I usually cut this off, but I don't want to shoot. It, you can you can cut your ribbon cable, but I guess if you're replacing the keyboard because it's bad, it doesn't really matter. Um, so how I do it is I just follow as close as possible to the to the metal and just cut this out. Okay, and I use my razor blade to pry this up. Now here's a real tricky part because this is actually it goes in and under the ribbon cable so you have to kind of it's a pain in the butt is really really on there okay and then the ribbon cable see here it's it's actually 
See that? See how that is? This is double sided tape on the ribbon cable so it holds to the case. So just work at it. Peel it off. Okay, and then you'll be able to get back here and actually remove it from the ribbon cable, which again, if you're replacing this, this is because it's bad, so it doesn't matter. Uh, now to release the latch or release the clip that actually holds this, you get your plastic spudger with a pointy end, get it in here, see, and there's a little groove here, let's see if I can actually get it to focus in close up. Probably not. Let me see. Nope, it's not going to want to focus that tight. So, here we go. Just gently push out. And then with your pry tool, just work that cable out. Okay? So, then you ask, well, how am I going to replace this here? Get yourself some Kapton tape. Pop this puppy back on there and just put some cap down tape right over it. And that's a heat resistant tape. Uh, heat resistant tape. To put this on here is a little bit harder to do. Uh, obviously, one handed. So you kind of just wiggle it in there like that. Take your pry tool and you shove it in so that it's nice and tight. And while you're holding it, you can. I'm losing focus there. Okay. Once you get it nice and tight, then you flip over to the flat end of your spudger or your pry tool, and you just push it in. Then you insert your new keyboard, making sure that these little tabs, The, the little tabs go into their corresponding slots. There's three of them. There. There's one on each end and one in the middle. You just slide those in. Drop that on there. Um, the next step you're going to have to do is you're going to have to actually stick your hand in here pushing. I don't know if you can tell, but See how that moves in towards me? You want to hold that. Um, you want to push the keyboard flat as possible so that you can get this clip back on there. Because if you try to put it on now, it's not going to. This is, this is too far apart, away from the case. So push it in, slide your clip cover back up with the little covers there pop your hard drive back on all the screws and you're all ready to go with your new keyboard on your Panasonic CFT8 thanks for watching